turkey in the straw. And Justin, if you see that Sammy's trying to request me again, will you tell me? Because I can't really keep up with all the comments. All right. Well, we're waiting on him. We'll just uh, we'll dive in, play a tune. Why not? Accept you, Sammy. So hopefully he'll be back in a second. Hey, we're back. <laughs> sounded good. What's what song is that, Sierra? Just missed a little turkey in the straw. That's I was gonna say that's, yeah. that's a crowd, crowd pleaser right there. That's right. You know, I mean, it's hard not to like turkey in the straw. It's a really, um, it's a really joyful tune. I think I saw a video of you playing that with Sam Bush way back. Do you remember that? I I do actually. Yeah, we got to do a. Um, I, at least I bet you're referring to a set we did together at the Gray Fox Bluegrass Festival. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah we did a little wow. workshop set and played that tune. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. Well, wow. Well, now that, uh, you know, it looks like we've got 266 people on the stream. Uh, let's jump in. Yeah, sounds let's good. Do so, let's do it. So right before all this. Ah, I lost him again. Oh, no. Well, I don't know. I seem to have lost him again. I think what's happening too, because I've heard about this from a lot of people. Are you still hearing me? Okay. Is that uh, everybody's on their Wi-Fi? Oh, you look yeah. like you're back. Yeah, I, I kicked I everyone everyone off my Wi-Fi. Hopefully, we're good. If it happens again, I'm just gonna go to a different room. Oh, you're like, get off. Yeah. That's right. So I was gonna say when you're sharing Wi-Fi and all the neighbors are yeah. sucking up the Wi-Fi, it's like everybody's on. <laughs> I, right. I think that's what's happening, but. If it does happen again, just keep going and I'll, I'll go to a different room, but we should be good. Yeah, for sure. Cool. So let's talk a little bit about 25 Trips. It came out right before all this madness happened and you were going to tour on it and that obviously all got postponed. So tell us a little bit yeah. about that album that was made. Yeah, so it came out, uh, you know, like two weeks before all this kind of started and, uh, and we were just getting ready to dive into the biggest part of the tour. And so all that obviously had to be postponed, but um, it's really great just to finally have this music out. I mean, I was working on it for quite a while and um, I went into the studio with a friend of mine, Shawnee Gandhi, who's an amazing engineer here in Nashville and she helped co-produce the record with me. And um, yeah, it's like there's all kinds of different kind of styles of music on this record, I would say. I'm not really sure what you would categorize it. Um, there's a lot of things in the way we made the record that I love about creating music and that some of the tracks were very raw and live and stripped down. There's a few guitar, vocal type things on the record. Um, but then there's also some tracks that were really produced as well. Things were, we actually started with me playing mandolin and singing and then kind of built everything else around it in the studio and I layered a bunch of my own harmonies and played some different instruments on multiple tracks and things like that. Um, and then uh, lastly, there's some tracks that kind of almost feel like a throwback to my previous albums where I got to have some of my favorite bluegrass players on there, Stuart Duncan and Brian Sutton, Justin played on some and yeah. uh, Vic Krause. So we kind of did more of a bluegrass ensemble and it had been a long time since I'd recorded with that kind of core instrumentation as well. So yeah, quite a bit of different things on there, all original songs or, or uh, songs that I co-wrote with some of my favorite friends and writers here in Nashville. Wow, so now when you listen to those songs back, a lot of the songs in the album are about the concept of time. We live in a world right now where time feels almost suspended. How do you hear these songs and what was sort of your thought of making an album so deep about time? Yeah, I think sometimes as, as a songwriter, I don't always um, write in terms of themes. It's only kind of later that you start realizing that there's themes that get kind of, um, you know, woven into the songs. And so obviously I've written a lot more songs than what we've recorded on this album. But when, when I started going through a lot of the 
original things that I kind of logged over the last few years, um, it really felt like this collection of songs had that theme. And it's, you know, kind of the push and pull of time, really. Some of the songs are about um, being able to have you know, that feeling where you're like, okay, everything's going great and all these wonderful things are happening. And if only I could just stop and really savor the moment and be, you know, um, present, you know, and that, that was a big part of it, which is part of why we decided to call it 25 trips because 25 really felt like a year where a lot of these amazing things were happening, where Justin and I got married and just like a lot of things, different things in my career where um, I just kind of was telling myself I really need to slow down. And then uh, other things, you know, kind of where I felt myself in moments of feeling like, oh, if only time, if I could hurry up and get through this, you know, negative feeling time and get on to the next thing. So there's a little bit of all those different themes and, and how that makes us feel about time. And yeah, a lot of the lyrics feel more relevant now than they even did when I wrote them. Wow. So when did you start working on that album? How long was that in the works? Um, I started working on it probably in the fall of 2018, maybe December of 2018, I think is, is when we did the first session and then we, uh, you know, kind of worked on it on and off for the next, you know, year or so really until it was completely done. Well, let's hear some of it. I I'm dying to hear some of it. The song that I I'm loving off, I've been playing it nonstop is beautifully out of place. Do you think, uh, maybe we could get uh, a, a yeah. request from me first? Sure, yeah, totally. Awesome. So that's the that's the first song off the record. The track one, so Perfect. sure I'll play one. Do it. You believe in me, but I can't see for you see how long is it gonna take me to trust myself. I've been stuck here so long, gotta find a way to Wow, just enchanting. It's beautiful, Sierra. Oh man, thanks a lot. So t tell me a little bit about, what, what's that about? What's, what's the, the story behind that? Well, funny enough, um, that song was actually written, I mean, I'm sitting in my little office space here at our house right now, and this song was actually written here in this room. And uh, one day I was, you know, just trying to write some new music, trying to figure out what kind of record I wanted to make. And um, I just was feeling, a little bit frustrated with how it was all going, you know, and kind of giving myself a hard time as I tend to do sometimes. And Justin was actually getting ready to go off to a recording session or something. And I was, you know, kind of whining, complaining to him about how I was feeling that day. 
And he said, you know, Sierra, I believe in you. At some point, you've really just got to learn to believe in yourself. And so <laughs> then he left. Oh. And the next thing you know, I just started writing, you believe in me, but I can't see what you see. <laughs> How long is it going to take me to trust myself, you know, so. That's perfect. That I, I, That's a lesson for all of us, you know. Yeah, I know. It's sometimes you you got to have those there's good people around you to, to remind you to, you know, <laughs> not be so hard on yourself. Well, so speaking of that, speaking of the way we reflect on ourselves, how do you feel about this album versus previous albums, previous songs you've written? Do you listen to an old song and think, wow, I, I've grown so much since then. I sound so different. Like, how does that experience work as a musician? Yeah, I mean, I think anytime I listen back to anything that I've I've done in the past, I think, you know, hopefully the goal is to feel like you've grown, but I think that, um, you know, hopefully the work I've done, I, I've been really kind of in some ways slow to put out records, but it's also because I, I really want to make sure that what I'm doing, I feel, um, you know, proud of and like I've given my best go. And so I think I can look back on my projects, at least knowing that, knowing that I did the best I could in that particular point in time. But I do think the goal is to hopefully like see where you've grown as you reflect back on things, whether it be, you know, writing, performance, singing, uh, any of those kind of things. You know, I think the goal is from, from album to album to, to try to grow, so. Wow. Well, well, let's stick with this album a little bit so now that we're on the topic. I mean, why don't we open it up to requests and uh, take some songs that people want to hear? Sure, totally. So how about something from 25 Trips? If anybody uh, wants to throw some requests in the in the live stream here, I'll throw them out. Yeah. Let's see, see, we, let's see what we've got. Ride, it's hard to, hard to see them so quickly. <laughs> yeah, here, let's see if I... Uh... Let's see. How about the last minute? We've got the, the bearded last guy. Minute. The bearded guy wants to the hear the last minute. Guy. Okay, the bearded guy. Okay. The bearded guy. Yeah, for sure. That's an instrument. Great love the record. I can play that. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna get me some water. Got my Del McCoy hey. cup here. What? 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 Gotta what? stay hydrated. Yeah, Cheers. got this at Del Fest. Yeah. I'll be, <laughs> if it happens here, I'm going. That's that's not too far from me in Northern Virginia. Yeah, that's a great festival. Love it. All right, so the last minute, I'll play that one. Um, I actually wrote that one here at home, too, and um, this is one that I uh, was going in the studio with Brian Sutton and Stuart Duncan, Justin, and uh, Big Krause, and I just thought, oh, I'm going to go in with this amazing band. I have to be able to have um, an instrumental of some sort to record with these guys, and so I literally wrote this the night before going in the studio, so I called it the last minute because I was writing it up until the last minute, so... Um, you should go check out the record version and hear all the glory of Stuart Duncan and Justin and Brian Sutton, but I'll, I'll do my best little solo version for you here. Thank you. 
You know, that that's the song that really resonated with me when I heard it because I feel like I have a tendency to really push things to the last minute. How do you kind of deal with that? How do you prioritize and say, all right, let me take a step back and let everything work out on time? Oh, man, I think the struggle is real <laughs> for all of us, you know, especially when there's like lots of things going on. And it's kind of funny. I even feel that way a little bit right now. And like all my plans got canceled <laughs> for like two months and I still find myself a little bit um, even like putting off things that I know I need to do. It's it's a strange thing. I think sometimes it's just like it is and you have to fight that tendency <laughs> for whatever, whatever that is, you know, that kind of procrastination that creeps in a little bit. So, so let, let's talk about that a little bit. How are you finding balance right now when we have all the time in the world? Are you playing more music than you usually would? Like how, how is your day is changing right now? It's sort of weird. I, I Like lately what I found is I'll have a day where I'm like playing hours. I'll get working on a project or doing something. I've been trying to like record a little bit here at home just for some fun little things. And, um, you know, that's kind of like I'll, I can really get in a project like that and focus. Or if I'm working on a particular, like trying to learn a particular thing, I can sit there and shed it for hours. Like, so I have a, a real extreme ability to focus, I think. But then... Um, I'll have like days where, you know, maybe I'll barely pick up the instrument and I'll, you know, find myself like trying to do other things, like just go out in our backyard and play or just, you know, hang out with, with Justin or, you know, make some cookies. <laughs> you know, so it's like, always I'm back to the to cookies. This, yeah, I'm just trying to use this time a little bit to see what it feels like to actually just rest and be home too, because I haven't felt that in a long time. I love what I do a lot. I mean, I love playing music and I love traveling. And so I've always been, you know, essentially on the go. So it's kind of strange to have time and to figure out like how to use it in a way. Which seems like a perfect supernatural follow up to this album being released, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. <laughs> cool. So yeah, let, let's take a, a couple requests. It looks like someone's asking about your mandolin. In the meantime, do you want to talk a little bit about uh, which mandolin you're playing there? Yeah, so this mandolin uh, just had a birthday the other day, actually. Um, happy birthday. So yeah, happy birthday, mandolin. Um, this is a, a Gibson F5. This is a master model is what they call it. It was built in 2009, so not too old. And uh, it was built by a guy named Dave Harvey, um, who still is a great builder from, Nash from Nashville here. And um, yeah, I, I've done, I had him do a couple different things to it. So your standard master model has the extended uh, fretboard, whereas this one is scooped out. So you can see how it kind of dips down like this. And that's essentially because, you know, you get that clicky pick noise otherwise. So he was able to scallop that for me. Um, the neck is a little smaller than your standard um, master model. And years ago, when I first got this mandolin, I had just played Ricky Skaggs's um, distressed model Gibson Signature Series mandolin. They made 50 of those under his name, and they have a really small neck, and I really liked that. So they kind of modeled this neck a little bit after that. It's not quite as small as the Skaggs distressed model. Um, but yeah, it's got a little bit of an aged finish, but it was kind of, it looked really new when I first got it and people tend to think it's not, people tend to think it's like a really old one, but it's really not that old. I've just played it a lot. So you can see it's, it's had a few travel wounds and stuff, but <laughs> it's been, it's been given love. That's all. That's how an instrument should look. Yeah, exactly. I've, I've played it a lot and it's, it's just been a, a great companion these last several years. So I'm lucky to have and it. And is that a... Sorry, isn't that a Chris Daly blue chip? Uh, um, this uh, one isn't you? actually. Uh, I have used those in the past, and they're great. This one's a little heavier. It's a 60. Oh, cool. It's a, a TAD 60, so it's got sort of the, you know, beveled edges on, on three sides here. So I typically just use the main point there. But, yeah, I've been using these for a few years now and really have grown to like them. I, I use the same kind. I, I swear by blue chip. It's yeah, awesome. they're so great. They're so great, yeah. and I've used uh, Diadario strings for many years now. So that's awesome. Well, uh, let's see. Let I, I, I'll tell you. I'm getting flooded with requests for Jerusalem Ridge. I know that that's an really. Old <laughs> that I have seen ten comments requesting that. So well, I'll throw that out if you want to play it. Let's do some Jerusalem Ridge. Um, let's absolutely. do it. 
you know, he, since he's sitting over here in the corner, and I told him I was going to rope him into playing something. Let's do it. Me, we should just get Justin over to play one. <laughs> Come on, bring him over. So, so Jerusalem Ridge is seriously uh, my paw hole, my, my grandpa. It's his favorite song. And so anytime I'm around them, that's what they want to hear. So they don't have Instagram, so they wouldn't be watching. <laughs> yeah, me move that over there. I've got instruments kind of sitting around everywhere here, just in case for, you know, depending on what people want to hear. So <laughs> ah. he's, having to, he's having to make his way over here from some, let's see. Awesome. All right. Hey, Justin. There he is. <laughs> hey, he's, he's fearless. Yeah. He's Look fearless. At that. <laughs> Clean cut. Yeah, I had to do it. Let's see, actually. Had to do it. Move the decorations here. <laughs> <laughs> Can you uh, scooch this way? Yeah. I think somebody a minute ago was asking if I still have my Weber mandolin. I do. That is, that's what plays started. It. He plays it a lot. When, uh, it's an awesome mandolin as well. Great instrument. But Okay. Well, let's play Jerusalem Ridge. Why not? <laughs> Thank you. 
Oh yeah, that, that was awesome. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna have to come back closer so I can see what's up. You can stay. Yeah, just yeah. Nelson, hang out. Don't leave. Right. <laughs> hey, welcome, man. So why don't you guys tell us a little bit about your chemistry as, you know, husband and wife and also as musicians. How long have you been playing and when did you guys meet? Well, uh, we've uh, playing music together for as long as we've known each other pretty <laughs> yeah, much. Yeah, we met uh, years ago at a festival. Um, I guess, well, I would have probably seen you play before we even met, but we kind of, he's from East Tennessee. I grew up in Northern Middle Tennessee. So there's some, there's a handful of festivals kind of in the middle that, you know, we would see each other at and stuff like that. So I remember seeing him play with various bands along the way for, you know, a long time. And so that was, yeah, years ago when I was a young teenager and um, just kind of well, growing up playing. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, we, Gosh, we've played music together on and off with him playing in my band for, you know, gosh, how long now? <laughs> well, um, 12 years, 13 years, yeah. you know, something like that. So for a long time. I know, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm you're not even in shock. There we go. Yeah, you're. This, yeah, is, now this you're is how my mom, this is how my mom, when I try to FaceTime her, I was talking to her earlier and the whole time, this was all I saw until finally I was like, mom, I can't even see you. <laughs> it's the same with mine. She, like she's here mama. watching the same What's thing that? right yeah, yeah i was gonna say mine is the same yeah that's how it goes cool well uh are, are there any other songs that you guys have really connected on over the years that you, you love playing together oh gosh there's a lot of them yeah. <laughs> that could be cool like what's what's the sierra justin you know what what are some of the songs that you guys love playing together well uh we've been doing some duo shows the last couple of years or uh Probably more than that, three years or yeah. so, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a whole, you know, whole set worth of stuff that we've done. Uh, you know, and of course we, you know, there's we've made a video of Cattle and the Cane, or you know, a while back that uh, a lot of people ended up seeing. And yeah, I mean, else. I think I think part of it is that I've, you know, we both grew up playing bluegrass primarily, so we know a lot of the same catalog tunes like Jerusalem Ridge. I mean. We both jammed those on and off so many times through through the years. It's not like we've ever worked up a version of it. We just know the tune because we've played in, you know, hundreds of jams where we've played played that very song. And so there's a whole catalog of like instrumentals like that that we just both know and could jam on. But um when we do our duo shows, we've tried to incorporate some of that stuff that we kind of grew up loving. And, and uh, there's a couple like original tunes of Justin's yeah. that we've done. And um, it's a really good opportunity for us to try to play some stuff that wouldn't be on say 25 trips, you know? So, or, or any of my records, it's like to be able to have an, an opportunity to just try some different things. Justin should play fall like rain. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> I've been I've been hearing so that fall like rains off of an album that Justin's been working on. So I've been been listening to a lot of uh, Justin music lately as he's been getting close to finishing his record. So I'm yeah, forced her to listen to it. <laughs> Justin, when when's your record Four coming teams. out? Well, we don't have a date set yet for the release, but uh, you know we were hoping for uh, late summer, but uh, we probably need to discuss that and figure out for sure when we want to want to put it out. So. Right. Yeah, still, cool. still in the, yeah. Yeah, I'm seeing a ton of requests for East Tennessee blues. What do we think of that? You can, right. play, we that. can play that, sure. <laughs> That's fitting. I did say he was from East Tennessee. Yeah. That's yeah. right. We'll send this out to anybody maybe watching in East Tennessee. <laughs> um, why don't you kick this one? All right. Thank you. 
That's a real foot stomper for you right there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one, too. It's been a while since I've played that one. Yeah. Yeah. So we've been doing this about 40 minutes. I mean, I could sit here all night and listen to you guys. Ah! But, um, I guess this is the most be... social interaction we've had in weeks. Oh, right? yeah. <laughs> you're, you're the first person I've talked to, aside from my mom, in the last, like, week. So this is great. I feel it. <laughs> yeah. Well, should we just take, a, a, you know, maybe one or two more requests? What do, what are you guys feeling? Sure. Yeah. Cool. Sounds good. Uh, do you oh, want to do... on here. Hi, Ronnie. <laughs> there we go. Do you guys want a fiddle tune or 25 trips? What are you guys feeling? Oh, somebody said poison. Could you play Ooh. poison? Sure. You know that one? I think that was... Yeah, it's, it's funny. It's like, Justin, so we kind of know each other's music a lot of times because of... Uh, you know, osmosis, basically, just like yeah. hearing it so much, you know, when I was working on my record, it's like, he heard the music as much as anybody could ever want to hear my music, or, you know, never want to hear it again, perhaps, <laughs> he heard it so much. Yeah. So it's like, we've not really sat down and worked these up, but I know he can play it. I know he knows it. Darren, I think that was actually my girlfriend, Melissa, requested Poison, so. Oh, that's really? Right. Okay. Yeah, so it was perfect. Better. Yeah. Take it away, guys. Wait, mandolin, guitar. Right. He played. Well, he played on the recording, yeah. to be fair. But yeah. he played Weisenborn, which we don't have one of those. You guitar, play guitar? Right? Yeah, get, get yeah. the guitar. Go for it. I've got my tiny little guitar sitting over here in the corner. We'll make him grab that. Justin there. plays everything, so it's convenient. <laughs> what other instruments do you have there? Do you have your Rono with you? I do. Uh, big fan of Rono. It's uh, one of my favorite makers. I've got. Um, I've got like just mandolins laying in the floor, basically. Wow. <laughs> there we go. We're ready. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right. I, well, go for it. How'd we do this when we're playing it live? How'd we do it? Yeah. I don't remember. <laughs> well, this might be experimental. I, I remember what I did. I don't remember what you did. <laughs> hey, this is what it's all about. Live and proper. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Welcome to our learning session of songs off of my record. <laughs> <laughs> I just remembered it. Remembered it. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so I wrote this with my friend Laura Lee Jones. Um, I don't know if she's on here or not, but hey, hey, LL, if you are, send this out to her. Thank you. 
Oh, yeah. Great job. Great Not job. bad. You're on the spot, right? <laughs> wow. Well, I think we've probably got time for one more. I think it would be a really cool idea to maybe wrap up with Father Time since that closes out the album. What do you guys think of that? Sure. Yeah, totally. Derek, can you tell us a little bit about what Father Time is about before we jump into that? Because that's a cool lyrical song. It's a little bit about this guy right here, and he always gets embarrassed, so he's like, I'm out, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> sure. It's better than solo. <laughs> he said it's better than solo. <laughs> um, yeah, sure. Um, let me grab my octave yeah. mandolin for that. Sweet. All right here. Um, yeah, this song, um, I actually wrote this when I was, uh, or started getting the idea to write it because, uh, as I said, Justin's from East Tennessee and his grandparents lived out there in Madisonville, just right beside his parents where, where he grew up. And we were out for Christmas visiting a couple years ago now. And uh, his grandpa ended up having a stroke on Christmas Day, I believe it was. And it was just a really kind of scary time. Thankfully, he's doing better now. But um, what that meant is because we were the ones actually visiting and everybody else lives right there. We, we just offered to stay with his grandma and she's had Alzheimer's disease kind of suffering from that for many years now and, um, has pretty much never known who I was, you know, she'll always say, who is that girl? <laughs> you know, when, when I'm out there, but, um, you know, it was really, kind of an interesting thing to get to step into her world like that like you know we would we'd go out and we'd visit for maybe i don't know a couple hours at a time but it's a different thing when you actually enter into somebody's home for an entire week you really get to see what you know someone living with that disease is really experiencing um but at the same time though it's really sad and i feel like almost everybody that i know has had somebody that's that's um, been affected either through a family member of their own or somebody they know that's been, you know, had that disease affect their lives in some way. Um, it's, it's really sad, but it's kind of beautiful at times too. There's moments of beauty that really shine through. And I just found that week that I got to spend with her and Justin to be the, just a really beautiful thing. And just sometimes I think seeing the way somebody else can love another person um, makes you kind of love, love them even more. So, so I kind of had this idea for this song and they have this old grandfather clock that goes off in their house, but it goes off on the half hour for some reason. And so you guys, you know, the, the sound I'm talking about. And, uh, you know, after listening to that for an entire week, I was like, I've got to write a song about this and it's got to incorporate that clock somehow. <laughs> and so I had this idea and then I had a writing session coming up with Mindy Smith, who's an amazing singer and songwriter here in Nashville. And so she helped me to finish it. So anyway, it's called Father Time. Oh. 
quiet fills the living room that breaks with every hour of the hour. It's Christmas time here in June. Is she singing those familiar tunes with you? Little songs from the past that make us cry or make us laugh. Oh, they almost bring. I got nothing. Oh, man. Thanks a lot. Wow. Unreal. Man, thank wow. you. Sarah, I thank you so it. much. That was the coolest uh, pilot we could possibly have had of uh, them between. What'd you think? Oh, man. Thanks so much. We'll definitely have to do this again. And I appreciate you guys wanting to uh, hop on here and kind of co-host some fun live streams with me and um i appreciate everybody tuning in it's just it's like an important time i feel like for us to all stay connected as much as possible it's uh it's a crazy time you know it's a crazy time and i think everybody's feeling uh, a lot of emotions you know grateful scared um restless <laughs> all those things and and hopefully we can you know as far as like the theme of time goes i i really hope that we can all just like use this time to uh you know become hopefully stronger and more grateful human beings at the end of all this so um hang in there y'all <laughs> well thank you so much it's an incredible time uh just to see what all the musicians in the world are doing people coming together playing music keeping the music going and uh for just sure. just want to thank uh, the Osiris Podcast Network for putting this on, uh, giving the chance for me and Sierra to get to talk. Uh, Sierra, thank you so much for your beautiful songs and just being all around positivity. Thank you. Man, thanks a lot. Yeah, and hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll do this again soon. I, uh, I've got nothing to do right now, so. <laughs> me neither for some reason. Yeah. Let's do it again. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Sierra. All right. Bye. See you. Bye.